dreams do come true with Super Trolley. Super Trolley is a 1988 game from Icon Design, published by Mastertronic, costing £1.99 on the Spectrum Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC. And if you're thinking that is who you think it is on the cover, no, it's not Stu Francis. I will need to explain, and let me explain, before anyone kicks off in the comments. Super Trolley was created for the TV show Jim Will Fix It. This was a TV show that ran for about 20 years, where people could write in and have their dreams come true. It could be you want to ride in an Intercity 125 up front and drive it. You might want to have a computer game that you've designed, written. The problem is, Jim Will Fix It was hosted by a man called Jimmy Savile, who, if you live outside the UK, after his death about 10 years ago, was revealed to be a serial sex offender. That is a rather poor caricature of him on the cover, However, like most of the fixes on the TV show, he had nothing to do with them other than turning up on the studio day and recording a bit to camera with the person who'd had, it, had the thing fixed for them. With that in mind, hopefully we can separate this game out from his crimes or we're just not going to get anywhere or just, you know, if, if it is a problem for you, just please tune out now. Because I think we are all adults, and it, it's a valid computer game that was released by Mastertronic, and I just want to review it, and he's nowhere. He's nothing to do with the game. I don't even believe his image rights were licensed from him. There's nothing mentioned in the inlay or anything of it being licensed from him or the BBC come to that. Plus, the game is basically you have work experience at a local Collett hypermarket. The kid who designed this game was called Andrew Collett, and uh, he's the guy who get, went on the show. It was Icon Design who produced the game. Interestingly, um, sometimes companies would approach the show and say, hey, we could we could do a fix for you. So it may have been that already Icon Design and Mastertronic already said, hey, if you want a computer game making, we can make one for you. So that's sometimes how it worked. So our first task of the day is to stock up with bread. And we have 47 minutes to do this but first we have to put some prices on some tins you know just like in the old days of um price was no um i know one shop a record shop that still does their prices their records exactly this way so and it's um yeah i mean you just have to line yourself up. you don't get any points for this it's just a menial task you have to do and the clock is ticking down while this happens, but I don't think it impacts your task time, possibly. Hmm. It's a novel the first time you do it, and then it becomes quickly very, very tedious indeed. I mentioned there's two weeks in the supermarket as well, and the game doesn't run in real time, but it's it's quite slow. Ten game minutes pass already, and that's what, about a game minute or so, so yeah... Uh, there's, there's your sprite, and you have a trolley full of, well, bread. And we've got to find where the bread is. There is no map. We just had to walk around the supermarket and find an empty shelf. And we found an empty shelf. So now we can pick up bread and we put it on the shelf by pressing fire. Walk back to our trolley. Get some more bread. You have to approach it from the right, uh, the left or right-hand side of the trolley. You can't go behind or in front of it. And you have to watch out for the other shoppers who all look like, well, kind of witches, I suppose. Uh, they all look exactly the same. They all just aimlessly shove their trolleys around and bump into you. And you mustn't bump into them too much either. You don't know how much you mustn't bump into them until the game says game over. Which is quite, um, yeah, especially when they're walking into you. But if you knock over too much stock and bump into your... Uh, customers too much, then you're working in Ast. I mean, no, you are actually just going to lose the game in Super Trolley. You can only walk off the screens where those little jagged edges are. So uh, if there's a flat edge and there's nothing adjoining. So there you go, that's the bread stocked up. And I can shove my trolley back to base and find out what I need to do next. 
while you're walking around, try to memorise what, what the food type says when you walk past shelves, because you're going to need to find each different type of food type when you're restocking. So if we go into there, we're back in... The, oh, no, I thought was going, that went back into the stock room. So... Yeah, you have to... I think it's like an 8x8 grid or so, something like that. All right, down by the tills. There are four tills. Stock up the sources. You have 47 minutes to do it. Oh, we're back with this. Joy. Amstrad CPC version. It's interesting that there's no link to the TV show in the game itself, but Mastertronic have decided to cash in on the TV show by including it on the cover. But then again, remember, Mastertronic also sold their games in other countries, so they may want to just have a UK-only cover. I don't know. I haven't seen a, a Spanish or French or German uh, version of this game, so I, I can't answer that. So our first task of the day on the CPC is stock up on pies. Mmm. Pie. Got 25 minutes to do it, and... On the CPC, we don't have to do that stupid business labelling the tins. Presumably because they ran out of memory. So we're very brown and pink. So we need to find where the pies are. And here we go. They are in a freezer. That's the only help you will ever get. There's no arrows or anything showing you where to go. You just have to find the empty shelf or fridge and then stock it up. On the Amstrad Spectrum, the time limits are fairly generous. So you're, you've got enough time, generally speaking, unless well, we're, we'll come to some of the other tasks later on because, oh boy, there's, there's more to Super Trolley than stacking shelves. So we head back to base. I mean, the, the graphics are very nicely stylized, although, as I say, all the old ladies in the shop look the same. It's very British cartoony, Wizard and Chips, the Beano, that kind of thing. 48 minutes uh, to find a customer's lost baby. You must find the baby and return with it. I mean, I'm just, just wondering here, but shouldn't we have just put out an announcement to say there's a, a lost baby in the store? We've got 48 game minutes to find the baby. And when certain things are lost, like babies or dogs, they move around. So it's perfectly possible to walk through the entire store and miss them because they've gone from just gone off the screen you were on, if you see what I mean. C64 version. A front room team production. Icon Design Limited. And oh yes, we've got to do the whole labelling thing. Except all you get is a hand to put the labels on. But there is a jolly tune to drive it all along. A jolly tune makes all the difference. So our first task of day on C64 is stock up the cabbage. The supermarket layout is slightly different on the C64. And all the other shoppers no longer have trolleys. And again, you've slightly lost that... Well, it still looks like... Oh, I've been too long. I haven't found the cabbages. Right, so on the spectrum, I've got to take some change to till four. And I am on my plus two now. So till four, that should be fairly straightforward. Let's go down the front of the shop and till four is the one closest this end of the shop.
And there we go. You just give them the change. That's done. And now well, let's go back to the little hole that I live in by the trolleys. Right now I have to catch a stray dog that has got into the supermarket. The, the instructions call it a hypermarket, but they call it hypermarket. But um, hey ho. So dogs, like babies, can freely move around, which makes them harder to find. The screens are very samey, so you do have to keep an eye on. Don't knock over the tins. If you knock over the tins, you will be back, and not only, only are you penalised because it hits the the unseen meter that kind of determines how well you're doing your job in terms of bumping into old people and knocking things over and and that can result in the end of the game so where's this dog is the dog i'm looking for where is this there it is there's the dog come here tricky woo come here tricky woo come on tricky woo I'm carrying the dog. You cannot see the dog. Let's not think about where I've put the dog. Mop up all the puddles left from the dog. Oh, the dog's weed everywhere. Oh. I mean, this game is menial tasks, but mopping up dog wee. And that means you've got to go in the store and find all of the dog wee, because you can bet... It's not going to be one puddle. There we go. Can't see I've got... Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing there? I just... 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 Right, I've... Have I mopped up? The old people are getting in the way now. Oh, this must be... This must be what it's like to work in Waitrose. Right, what do I... Do I, st I know I stand there looking like I've wet myself. What do I do? Do I need to fetch a mop? No, I'm just... Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right, well, I've mopped up, clearly. I've clearly mopped that up. Um, okay, I, I have some kind of mop that's invisible, apart from when I use it. It's a magic mop. Here we go. Right, can I turn to... No, 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 no. Come on. I need to mop this wee-wee up. There we go. Look, it's clearly a mop. You don't, there's no indicator as to how many puddles there are, so you've got to wander around the entire supermarket until you found them all. Back on the Amstrad. I'm looking for the baby, and there's the baby. That looks like a Wizard and Chips baby, doesn't it? Sweeney Toddler. What do I pick the baby up? I've got the baby. No, no, not pick the baby. I've got the baby. I've got the baby. Right, we've got the baby back to the the cubby hole where I live. It is only ten o'clock on Monday morning, and I just get the feeling I've I've seen everything the super trolley has to offer. We go down here. That's till four, which means my little cubby hole is just along here. There we go. Next task. A customer has lost her baby. I've just done that one. Okay. I assume it's some kind of random generator that doles out the tasks so perfectly feasible via poor coding that uh, it could give me the same task twice in a row. you think they'd try and make that not happen, but hey-ho. Right, let's go find the baby. With no indicators at all. Is, is that the same place it was before? I forwarded it on, and third time, it offered me the task of finding a baby. 
and now the sprites have started to corrupt. It is now 10.45 on Monday morning, and I feel like I'm forever destined to be looking for lost babies. Along with corrupted sprites. When I was last looking for the baby, I knocked over some tins, so before I look for the next lost baby, which will be the fourth, I better rearrange all the tins, um, which are just kind of stacked up in that way. Oh, hang on. You have been sacked for constantly knocking into customers and objects. They A, they keep knocking into me. B, health and safety rules say those objects shouldn't be stacked up where they are anyway. And C, why do all these children keep going missing in this supermarket? Oh, yeah, I've just looked at the cover of the game. Back on the 64, and uh, I'm shoving my trolley round. It's even less fun on the 64, even though it's got music. Zap didn't like this game. In fact, no one really liked this game. And it's a shame, because it actually... It feels quite modern, because there's, there's so many games these days where you do menial tasks from real life. Game... Not every game has to be fantastical. You can drive a train. Hello, Mr. PSB. You can run a farm. Okay, there's simulators. But I bet you there's a game somewhere where you get to basically run a supermarket or or shove a trolley around a supermarket. But it is menial. I mean, any game we've got to mop up dogwee. I've been sacked for taking too long because I couldn't find where I needed to go, even though the game is only like 8 by 8 screens. Spectrum version. It's now lunchtime on a Tuesday, and I now have to shove trolleys around the supermarket because people have just left trolleys everywhere. Again, you don't know how many you've got to get. You just have to keep on taking trolleys back to the trolley bay, and then hopefully at some point there's no more trolleys to get. And the only way you know you haven't completed a task is by going back to your cubby hole. It's Wednesday now, and I've been playing this game for quite a while. And I'm still stocking stuff up. There's there's really no more to the game. It is lost dogs, lost babies, shove trolleys around and restack shelves. That is pretty much it. Super Trolley feels like an oddly modern game. The menial tasks you find in oh so many modern computer games. However, there's not much fun here. By the lunchtime on the first day, you've seen everything there is to do and you've just got to survive until the end of the week, in which case you'll get, well, I think it's two weeks actually, when you get your promotion. The Amstrad and Spectrum versions have a slightly different layout and graphical look to the C64 version, although the gameplay remains the same on all three. I desperately wanted something to be in this game that I could just grab hold of and say, yes, this is good. I like the overall idea of wandering around an isometric 3D world of a real life situation. It is different from many other games around at the time. The problem is there just isn't enough entertainment here. The game is as bland as the colour palette on that Spectrum version. 10 minutes in, you've seen everything you need to see, and if you can stand playing this game long enough to actually complete it, then goodness me, you've got far more stamina than me, or I suspect 99.9% .9 of other computer game players. <laughs>